Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Assess and Compress. Uh, my name is Adam Hopkinson, and I'm one of the clinical trainers for Medi UK. And with me, I've got Rebecca Elwell. She is a lymphedema nurse specialist. And um, I'd just like to remind you to please ask me any questions that you've got throughout the presentation. And myself and Rebecca will try and answer as many as we can when we get to the end. Thank you. Our legs are very important to us for many reasons, so I wanted to take a moment with you to appreciate what our legs enable us to do in the love leg section. I'm going to provide you with a little information on one of the most common lower leg issues, venous disease, and highlight how it is diagnosed and show you the signs and symptoms. Factors that contribute to venous disease and slow improvement when being treated are very important to understand and I will go through these with you. After that, I hope you will be in a lot better position to identify if you, or someone you know, needs to see a health professional and what assessment they should expect. Healthy legs enable us to do so much in our lives and we may not fully appreciate their importance. Here are some pictures that I want to share with you that, for me, highlight the importance of healthy legs. Family. Healthy legs let us take summer walks with our families and maybe enjoy the last warm glow of the sun. Fun. Who doesn't like a beach, while sat on a deck chair underneath a beautiful parasol, enjoying the sights and sounds? Freedom. Not everyone can or wants to walk up a mountain, but freedom can mean popping for a cuppa with friends. Future. Who knows what lovely occasions are just around the corner, and you never know who you will be bending your knees with on the dance floor. Let's take a look at venous disease. Venous disease can occur when the venous system in the leg is no longer working well. Blood in the leg veins has to travel the furthest distance from the feet to the heart and work against gravity. This means they have a hard job and sometimes need help. Your venous circulation is a network of tubes called veins that take blood from all parts of your body back to your heart. Veins contain valves which, in health, prevent the blood falling back down to your feet. Moving your feet and toes makes the muscles in your calves move, which squeeze the veins and pumps the blood upwards. In the unhealthy vein, veins can become damaged. This means the blood falls back to the foot, causing congestion in the legs. The veins in the legs will swell, and this is the cause of venous disease. Now we understand the difference between healthy and unhealthy veins. We need to be aware of the signs and symptoms to look out for. Spider veins are small clusters of blue or red veins that sometimes appear on your face or legs. They're harmless and do not bulge underneath the surface of the skin. Swelling in the ankles, feet and legs is often caused by a buildup of fluid in these areas called edema and can be attributed to venous disease. Dry and itchy skin on your legs, also known as venous eczema, is a long-term skin condition that affects the lower legs. It's common in people with varicose veins. However, treatments are available to keep it under control. General aches in your legs. The most common symptom of peripheral arterial disease, PAD, in the lower extremities is a painful muscle cramping in the hips, thighs or calves when walking, climbing stairs or exercising. The pain of peripheral arterial disease often goes away when you stop exercising, although this may take a few minutes. Varicose veins are swollen and enlarged veins that usually occur on the legs and feet. They may be blue or dark purple, are often lumpy, bulging or twisted in appearance. Darkened skin colour on the lower legs is called haemosiderin staining, and this occurs when the red blood cells are broken down, causing haemoglobin to be stored as haemosiderin. Your white blood cells can clear up some of the excess iron released into your skin, but this may result in a stain. Now you are aware of the signs and symptoms of venous disease, I'm now going to talk to you about the factors that can contribute to venous disease and also factors that slow improvement. Being overweight. Increased weight will cause an increase in the pressure on the veins in the legs, making it even more difficult for the blood to flow back up to the heart. Mobility. If you're not active, the calf muscle pump, which helps push the blood back to the heart, becomes compromised. Standing still for long periods can also increase the pressure in the veins. Age. As we get older, there can be a greater risk to reducing mobility and general health. Previous injury or surgery to your legs. This can reduce mobility or veins could have been damaged due to the surgery. Deep vein thrombosis, DVT or blood clot. A blood clot in your legs will damage the valve or valves and therefore reduces the ability of the blood to flow back to the heart. 
History of varicose veins. Swollen and enlarged veins in the leg are caused by damaged valves. If there is a history of venous leg ulcers in your family, this can place you in the risk category. History of intravenous drug use. When drugs have been injected, this often results in skin, tissue and circulation damage. Factors that slow improvement are smoking. Smoking reduces the amount of blood that is able to reach the skin in your lower legs, therefore reduces healing ability. Poor diet and poor intake of nutrients will not feed the system and encourage healing. Instead, a well-balanced diet will provide you with the nutrients and vitamins required and reduces the chance of becoming overweight. High cholesterol. Cholesterol builds up in the artery wall, restricting the blood flow from your heart to the brain and the rest of your body. It can increase the risk of blood clot developing somewhere in your body. Lack of daily exercise. Exercise is great for circulation and reducing swelling and keeping you active. Medical conditions such as diabetes, arthritis, cardiovascular disease can affect wound healing. You must discuss this with your GP or nurse to ensure you have the correct support to manage these conditions. With all this new information, it may leave you with a question, do I need to see a healthcare professional? To maintain or improve the health of our legs, it is important to take action. And if any of these symptoms are experienced, then a phone call to the doctors is most certainly advised. Hopefully, you'll be invited into the surgery for an assessment. After you have booked for your assessment, your healthcare professional will want to ask you questions about yourself, your health and your leg condition. This is known as a holistic assessment. This assessment may start with a telephone consultation initially, so they can start collecting information to understand why you've got a leg ulcer. As part of the assessment, there will be a simple test carried out to ensure there are no problems with your arteries. One of the assessments your healthcare professional will perform is an ABPI screening. This is a quick and easy way to check the blood flow to your legs and feet. It can detect if there is anything that is slowing your blood down. The ABPI is taken by checking the blood pressure in your arms and comparing it to the pressure in your legs. Years ago, ABPI could often take up to 60 minutes to perform and required you to lay down on the treatment room couch for the duration of the procedure. Luckily, technology has now moved on and an automated ABPI machine called Messy ABPI MD is now available to perform this task. There are other screening tools available. Messy has some great benefits. Some of these are that it is automated, so it only takes around one minute to perform the whole procedure, which means you will only be laid on the couch for that amount of time. The results are instant and the nurse will be able to discuss and agree treatment options suitable to you. Messy will only require you to lay down for around one minute, giving it time to inflate and deflate the blood pressure cuffs placed on one of your arms and both of your legs. The pressure you feel in the cuffs is the same as you would expect when having your blood pressure taken. Messy is portable and your ABPI can now be done at home with ease. With this new technology, your assessment should be quick and simple for both yourself and the healthcare professional. So what happens after the test? There are many different options to help everyone. So the best way to find out what happens after the test is to book an appointment with your healthcare professional. Have a personal holistic assessment, including ABPI, and find a way that's individualized for you. Please join Medi UK in their presentations each day this week. They are all advertised on the Legs Matter webpage and will give you a good insight into what individualized treatment could look like for you. And here's an inspirational quote I've always loved by Roman Payne. A person does not grow from the ground like a vine or tree. One is not part of a plot of land. Mankind has legs so it can wander. And my closing words as a gift to you are legs really do matter. So uh, thank you everybody for uh, for watching my presentation. I hope it did give you uh, a little bit more information than uh, than you currently had. Um, so myself and Becky are more than happy to uh, to answer any questions. Um, so Becky, how was the uh, how was the presentation for you?
I thought it was excellent. I'm still smiling at that lovely quote. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. I've not heard that before. Um, and so true. And I think a lot of the things that um, you brought out in the presentation are around um, taking for granted, really, that everybody can get around and um, not experience pain or swelling. And you brought to life there to, to tell us that actually that's not the experience of lots of people. Lots of people do really struggle um, with lots of different reasons. I also think that there was a lot of health promotion there. Um, so you talked about cessation of smoking. Um, you talked about us following a healthy diet. And that's not something we always think about in relation to our legs. You don't really think what you eat is going to have a real impact on that. But if you have a leg ulcer, um, actually nutrition is so important, as is hydration as well. Um, you talked about sort of um, trying to remain active, trying to do exercise and we know it's not always possible to go out and do more walking that's a luxury that not everyone has but certainly trying to do some chair-based exercises um, and um, the British Lymphology Society has a an everybody can campaign so if you type into Google everybody can hopefully there's some good resources and all this week there's loads of stuff in the live lounge you can do pilates um, mornings and evenings you can um, learn more about how exercise can help your veins so there was an awful lot of things that we can do for ourselves that you highlighted there which was great the messy um, sounds amazing one minute for the whole thing yeah, so it is a great bit of kit. Um, so, it, like I said in the in the presentation previously, um, patients would have to lay down for a long period of time. And I know clinic patients coming to my clinic, they didn't necessarily want that or uh, or really look forward to that uh, that proposition. Um, but with Messi, there's there's no resting period whatsoever. You literally just lay your patient down. It's the t it takes this. Uh, you just put the cuffs on, press the button, and within sixty seconds, you've got uh, you've got your result, and your patient can be uh, can be sat back up again. So the uh, the point that I was uh, the the reason I included uh, messy ABPI um, on the on the end of the presentation is because previous ways of checking your ankle brachial pressure index did put people off from going to clinic. Um, ABPI isn't always uh, isn't always necessary, um, and that's why I talk a lot about the holistic assessment from your healthcare professional. So if you have a a, a, a good holistic assessment, um, I know from yourself from the uh, the British Lymphology Society, um, not all people suffering with uh, with lymphedema, which is uh, which is quite a, a severe disease, and you would see a, a specific uh, specialist like yourself. Um, it's yeah, it's really important to have that holistic assessment. Is the is the message that I wanted to portray, along with the other things that you picked up, Becky. Um, so like like I talked about with uh, with diet, lifestyle, exercise, all that kind of thing. I just wanted to um, bring all that information together in a in a quite a simple way, quite an easy to understand way, um, just with the signs and symptoms, and and leave the uh, leave viewers with a a good message uh, and a little bit of education. So I'm glad uh, I'm glad that's. Uh, Kept, that came across yes definitely I think you did a really good job I think like you said thank you for pointing out that some patients are not able to undergo a, an ABPI in the traditional way and um, from you know large legs legs that are very big very swollen um, or legs that have got a, a different shape it might not always be possible so that's important as you say for us to be able to look at different ways of taking that assessment um, so thank you for pointing that out I also think as well one observation was in the presentation you said about nurses um, then carrying out that procedure and I think we need to remember there's lots of um, allied healthcare professionals as well so podiatrists and physiotherapists working in lymphedema specifically um, and so lots of other health professionals now are getting involved um, in uh, providing these uh, vascular assessments prior to the application of compression and really it'd be wonderful to think that every GP surgery could have a device that meant they could move forward to screen for peripheral arterial disease and fit with compression at the early stages. Um, a colleague in East Staffordshire, Jill Boast, has done a huge amount looking at getting the automated devices into GP surgeries. So really, we need to be looking to our primary care colleagues before patients have um, any ulceration or any wounds on the skin to see if we could get people um, appropriately managed, referred on to vascular in the instance of um, PAD, or treated with compression early and prevent some of these problems where appropriate. So hopefully that's another take home message. Fingers crossed. And I do spend a lot of time working with, uh, with GPs and practice nurses and they, they really do find that 
because it's so quick and simple and easy to do. Um, whereas previously it was quite difficult. They've been they've been really really pro um, uh, messy ABPIMD, and they've they've actually uh, absolutely loved it. And because it's such a simple machine to use, um, if a practice nurse doesn't do ABPIs on a, on a regular basis, then the practice nurse has been able to pick that up. Um, after not using it for uh, for a, a prolonged period of time, and still found it really really simple to use. Um, so it's it, it it is about getting the right assessment at the right time and getting the right um, treatment or management regime. Obviously, in agreement with your your patient to make sure that everybody's happy and we're all working to the same goal. Um, and and yeah, it's uh, it's all good. It's very good. There's lots of things there for us to think about for our own. Um, how to, you know, for any of us standing all day, whether you work as a, as a nurse or a physio or a podiatrist or whether you work in the supermarket, whether you work driving, whether you work in, in any um, job that enables you to stand for long periods and not be able to change position, all of these things will have a, a significant impact as well as our family history and environmental factors on our lower limb health. So really important for us to be, um, to be promoting that message. I think we have a question. So um, we have a question saying, has the machine been tested for use in people with lymphedema? So Becky, do you want to, do you want to have a try at that one? I think from our perspective, the machine is tested for recording ABPI on, on any individual, regardless of their underlying um, health uh, um, or, or uh, any diseases they may have. But ultimately, we do need to take into account the fact that if patients have very large limbs um, or if we have um, misshapen um, legs, that it might not always be um, the way to, to assess vascular status. So we might actually be looking to utilise um, the British Lymphology Society assessment tool for vascular assessment or we may be employing traditional um, toe pressures and, um, and other palpation of, of uh, pulses um, where appropriate. So yes, it's definitely suitable for patients with lymphedema if their legs are of a size and shape that allows the cuffs to fit well. Absolutely, there is a, there is a limit of the size of, uh, of, of blood pressure cuff that can go around the ankles. And I, I have had patients that have been, have been larger than that. And like you said, uh, Becky, you would go on to do uh, obviously the holistic assessment, but TBI might be, uh, might be appropriate as well as uh, other, 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 other tools that we can use in the uh, holistic assessment uh, toolkit that we've got as well. Um, so that was a really good question. Thank you for that. I think it's interesting thinking about also um, discomfort because that's been another reason for patients not having um, a traditional ABPI if, if the blood pressure cuff is, is too uncomfortable or too painful. So I think, again, we do need to have other other tools to make um, make it known that if you go for one of these tests and it isn't suitable for you, that's not it. That's not the end of the road. There, there's plenty of other things that we can do um, to assess that. This is just one, one option. Absolutely. And I've also found as well, um, what, um, letting your patients know in advance or letting people know in advance before they come to clinic if, they, if they're going to be having an ABPI done. Um, and there was, there was one lady that uh, in particular at a, uh, at a Lindsay Lake Club in Leeds that, uh, that came in and she'd been referred by a GP and she, she, really, didn't have a good, she didn't, really didn't have an understanding of what she would be experiencing. And when it came to the ABPI, it scared her. It really scared her. She didn't like the, didn't like the sensation. Um, and I just said to her, I said, look, this is the, uh, this is, this is how it works. You've, you've had a go with it. You didn't like it. That's absolutely fine. Do you want to come back next week and have another go? And she, she was, uh, she was really pleased that she'd been offered a second chance. Um, and she was a, uh, she was the type of lady that just needed to, um, just ponder and think about it before she had that done. And that's absolutely fine as well. And the following week she came back, she had her ABPI done. It was absolutely fine. We, um, we were managed, managed to, uh, to get some compression hosiery for her. And she went away one very, very happy lady. So um, yeah, there's, there's always different, uh, different things that we can use and, and options that we've got. We're all different. We all need different ways of, of, of approaching things. There isn't a one one size fits all kind of thing. So we've got another question. So Adam, this one is, what are the contraindications of ABPI? Um, so the, um, there aren't many contraindications for, uh, for ABPI. Um, I wouldn't do an ABPI on somebody of a young age, but uh, you probably wouldn't be expected to do that. Um, and also you've got to be careful with, uh, with pregnancy. Um, so people that are pregnant, you, uh, you might uh, want to use, a, uh, use an alternative, uh, alternative form of assessment. 
Um, in the general, in general, it's it is quite a safe, quite a safe uh, procedure, and some people would uh, would think that it's invasive. Um, so, um, but it's actually not. It is it is um, purely done on blood pressure cuffs. Um, so there's there's nothing that uh, nothing that pierces the skin or anything like that, and it's quite a comfortable uh, quite a comfortable procedure to have done. So it is just simply with the device you're talking about having the blood pressure done on four limbs, so the arms and the legs, um, and then that will compute a reading then just for anybody who's watching this and is not aware um, that that's the case. So we've had another question in regarding um, lip edema. So somebody suggesting um, that we don't forget about lip edema um, and also that this is a different condition that needs um, compression. So absolutely, um, we, we don't want to forget about anybody with any condition. Um, everybody's equally important to, to have access to compression. Um, again, um, in lip edema, we can, depending on the severity, have altered shape and size of the limb. So that can make it more difficult difficult um, as with lymphedema patients to, to utilize something like the automated um, ABPI um, and traditional ABPI cuffs are only um, certain sizes that are available. So we might have to take into account doing a, a different um, assessment. We can use the British Lymphology Society a vascular assessment tool for holistic assessment. We can also utilize um, toe pressures, as we've said. Um, and often in lipedema, the feet are not affected um, by um, enlargement. So we can actually utilize um, palpation of foot pulses, um, usually in a good way with uh, to support our decision making regarding compression um, so yeah absolutely we don't want to forget about any group of patients and we should be screening all patients um, prior to the application of any compression um, and compression is a mainstay of treatment for so many conditions you know we you touched on all of our um, vascular insufficiency conditions we've touched on lymphedema we've touched on lipedema um, maybe that looking towards more prevention um, of some um, progression of disease as well. So you touched on pregnancy there, um, which was really interesting because so many pregnant ladies experience leg, um, ankle and feet swelling, but very rarely do they um, access compression um, via the health service. So they might choose to do so themselves. Um, lots of pregnant ladies on forums finding out about what to wear, but not always um, through the health service. Do you have any experience from um, midwives or anything else, Adam? Uh, midwives is not one that's uh, not one that I've really dealt with, uh, but I do know that uh, there are pregnancy um, hosiery out there, and if people um, are pregnant and they um, they want to wear tights, they have kind of a, a softer panel around the uh, the abdomen. Um, so as the as your baby's growing, as your bump's growing, the uh, the panel expands and it doesn't exert any additional uh, pressure on your uh, on your tummy. Um, so if you uh, if you are suffering with uh, or if you do develop any uh, varicose veins or ankle swelling during pregnancy, then yeah, yeah, please access that. They are available from uh, from lots of different companies. We've had another question regarding a specific condition, which is um, what is lipodermatosclerosis? Um, my legs are dark and going wine bottle shaped. So, Adam, do you want to start off on that one? Uh, so lipodermatosclerosis is where you, uh, you, you're quite right in what you say is, uh, is an inverted um, champagne bottle um, leg. So you've got quite a, quite a thin ankle and, and, and a, a lot wider calf. Um, now, um, applying compression to a, a leg of that shape can prevent the, the calf from getting bigger. Um, and um, from, uh, from different companies, there are, are hosiery that is off the shelf. It doesn't always have to be a made to measure um, compression garment that's available to yourself. You can get off the, off the shelf. Um, so uh, again, what I would suggest is um, phone, your, uh, phone your doctors, get a referral to the, uh, to the relevant healthcare professional, have that holistic assessment, whether that includes an ABPI or not, um, obviously that healthcare professional will, uh, will take that into consideration. And there's so many different uh, selections of hosiery out there, lots of different colors, lots of different fabrics and materials. Um, so, so don't think, uh, don't think hosiery is boring. Uh, I'm quite a tall person. I'm six foot six, and um, they even have off-the-shelf hosiery to uh, to fit people with uh, with long legs like myself. Um, and there's these sports so uh, sports style socks. There's there's, there's so many different uh, different options out there. Um, they're, they're certainly not boring, and they're certainly uh, certainly not medical stockings as uh, as a lot of people used to uh, used to call them um, there's a lot of a lot of different options out there i think 
going along with that, one of the things that's really important is the advancements, not only in color and fabric and um, how attractive the garments are, but also around the application and removal, which we know that a lot of people really struggle with. So there's a huge amount of aids now to get your garments on and off with that are available on prescription. So if you've been prescribed compression um, and um, you struggle to apply and remove it, don't just stick them in the bottom drawer and think, well, that's it then. You know, ask your doctor, to ask your practice nurse um, and um, get hold of um, an aid to have a go with. And it might not be the first one that you have. That might not work for you, but there's plenty out there. We can have also garments made with zips um, and Velcro to ease the application and removal. So, for example, some patients with arthritis in their hands or lack of strength. Um, so certainly these options make life a lot, lot easier. So I think that um, we can we can look at um, lots of different ways of getting the hosiery on and off, which traditionally did seem to be a, a real problem, but hopefully is not is not so much anymore. So with lipodermatous sclerosis, I think the other thing um, around that is that it can be acute and it can be chronic, which is longer term. So in the acute stages, it does tend to be um, very painful. Um, so, uh, you know, acutely painful um, and there can be redness and heat um, and swelling um, as well as that distortion of shape we've talked about. So I think it's really important that um, you get help, as Adam said, get referred and find out what's going on. Um, and also it can be confused at that stage with cellulitis and infection in the skin and tissues. And also, um, as you mentioned, Adam, earlier, a, a thrombosis or DVT or blood clot. So really important to get to the G and get that checked out and make sure chronic lipodermatous sclerosis longer standing is when it's more both legs that are affected there is distortion of shape there is discoloration you talked about the hemosiderin staining explain that beautifully that brown staining um, and often sort of distortion of shape but without the pain so much so definitely get some get some help and get that um, get that diagnosis and then the appropriate management of treatment so somebody's asking if there's um, a list of the different aids that are available um, to ask the GP for a script when patients struggle get them get to get them on and off so I think there is an excellent list which um, was comprehensive at the time of, of publication in the best practice for compression hosiery statement um, so that's the second edition of that there's a whole page in there um, about the items that are available um, on prescription there are still some items that are not on prescription um, but if you really think that might be the right one for you then sometimes it's worth purchasing something that might be 20 or 30 pounds and you'll use day in day out can sometimes be useful Adam any tips from Medi's perspective from Medi's perspective, we do have uh, we do have something called a Medi Butler on prescription, uh, and that's say that's a metal frame, and you simply just pop that on your on the on the desk in front of you or the kitchen side. Um, you can roll the hosiery over the uh, over the top of it, and it simply just hook your foot in, pull the uh, pull the handles on the on the butler. So if you've got back problems and you struggle to touch your toes. Um, it gives you your arms that extra extension and it is so they are so easy to use in fact I've got a little bit of a story about that my uh, my daughter she's four and um, I was having a mess about with uh, mess about with the, uh, the the Medi Butler and she came in and she's like daddy what are you doing um, and I, I showed her how to use it and I, I gave her uh, gave her the Medi Butler I also gave her a, a class one Duomed soft and she uh, she put the hosiery on the butler and she uh, she put it on her leg and she pulled it up and she was walking around with a below knee class one but it was thigh length because she's obviously because she's short and it was it was just funny but it, it was it just shows how how easy they are once you uh, once you have an understanding of of how just how to do it it, it makes it so much uh, so much more simple and i agree the um, you've got to take time with the different applications that are on the market there's new ones coming on the market all the time um, sometimes the old ones are the best, sometimes the new ones are better, but it just depends on, on you, your body shape, how you bend, how you move. Um, and sometimes it's perseverance as well. Just because you've tried it once and you've struggled with it doesn't mean to say that one isn't the one for you. Um, so have a look, have a conversation with your healthcare professional. Do your research on the internet. There's a lot of information, uh, a lot of information out there on the internet. Um, and there's, there's also YouTube videos um, to show you how to use these things. Um, so yeah, yeah, do your learning and, and be persistent, be persistent. 
Yeah, I would agree with that. I think it is trial and error, definitely. Everybody's different. We all have different needs. We all have different ways of looking. And also, you know, if you can't get on with an aid, then don't feel that that's it for you. There's always something else. As I said, we can look at having adaptations made to the garments these days as well. So it isn't always about sort of struggling to do things. It's about trying to find an easier way. And actually, the other thing is with the aids is that with being available on prescription, sometimes you might also meet somebody else who um, has got an aid and then you can uh, see what the pros and cons of each one are by trying that out. So yeah, lots lots of food for thought there regarding getting garments on and off and how to advise um, people, friends and family to do the same. You know, thinking we talked about pregnancy earlier, that can be a whole different ball game to getting down to putting your socks on, um, just as if you've got any health, health problems like arthritis or anything else. So yeah, really important to keep trying yeah don't don't let uh, don't let not being able to or finding it difficult to apply be a barrier to wearing compression hosiery it really does work um so uh, so yeah so Becky, is that, yeah questions it, yeah we've run out of questions so sorry so I'd just like to take this opportunity to say uh, thank you very much, uh, Becky, for uh, for joining me uh, in the, the question and answer. Um, you've been a big help. Do I really appreciate it? And thank you to uh, to everybody for uh, for listening to uh, to my uh, my presentation. And please don't forget, legs really do matter. <laughs>